Hello, I am Joshua Reynolds. Ever since 2012, we've known that many are embarking on a great quest. As Bono et al. put it in their SOK paper, the quest to replace passwords. We need a mechanism for authentication which is both usable and strong. And we all know that while passwords have served us for a long time, they have problems, as we've just seen. Human memory just doesn't scale to the number of accounts that should have unique passwords. Password databases keep getting compromised. And fishers keep convincing people to give their passwords away freely. And so we've created two-factor authentication. It combines any two of something you know, something you have, and something you are. In the case of our study, a password you know with a YubiKey you have. And there are many vendors offering hardware tokens like YubiKeys. Large tech companies are starting to require them to authenticate pushed code, and many online services like GitHub, Google, and Facebook support them. But if these tools are going to find wide adoption, they will need to be usable. And how do we know this is important? Well, we've seen that just because we can invent great cryptography, it doesn't mean it will get widely used. And PGP is the classic example of this, why Johnny can't encrypt. And TLS failure warnings in the browser are another. Security is only effective to the degree that real people can and will use it. For our experiments last summer, we chose to study three of Yubico's YubiKeys. These are the YubiKeys 4, Neo, and Nano, which were among the most mature product offerings in the space at the time. They are hardware tokens that don't require copying any numbers, or a special card reader, or a telephone connection. And YubiKeys also implement the emerging FIDO Alliance universal two-factor protocol, among various others. And because the literature did not contain usability studies of this new technology, we set out to answer some groundwork questions for YubiKey usability. What is the current state of YubiKey usability, and how might it be improved? We wanted to avoid laboratory bias, so we created an experiment in two parts. First, a necessary session in the laboratory to study the usability cost of adoption, setting up this key on several accounts, and then a longitudinal study where participants took the key home for a few weeks to test its usability in context of their daily lives. We report results from 31 participants in the laboratory study and 25 in the longitudinal study. Participants were recruited across a university campus, and to be eligible, participants needed to have experience using Windows 10, Google, and Facebook accounts, these being the accounts under study. More specifically, in the laboratory study, participants were given five minutes to educate themselves on YubiKeys, and we also handed them the YubiKey 4 they would be using inside its original shipping envelope and observed what resources they used to educate themselves. And then they had 15 minutes each to set up their YubiKey with the provided Google, Facebook, and Windows 10 accounts on our machine, and the order in which they attempted these accounts was rotated for each participant. Participants were instructed to tell us when they believed they had correctly set up the key. And if they took too much time, we asked them to move on to the next task to make sure they would have time to attempt all three accounts. And study coordinators were in the room taking notes but gave no input or assistance during these tasks. And we finished with a survey containing a standard usability questionnaire along with some other Likert questions and open-ended questions which we coded. So given those first five minutes, what resources did our participants consult to educate themselves about this new security tool? The answer is they used Google or Bing search and most commonly clicked on the top search results. So they ended up at Wikipedia and Yubico's own product website. So they read the rather technical YubiKey article on Wikipedia or perhaps product specifications or pricing, or in some cases, watched some product videos available, and there are links to those in the paper. This masked hacker stars in one of those. He is very angry because someone protected his Facebook account with a YubiKey. So let me tell you how well each participant did on each account. 83% of people succeeded in registering their YubiKey for two-factor authentication on the Google account we gave them. This involved finding the correct place and settings, and following the wizards to add first a phone and then a security key, the YubiKey, for two-factor authentication. On Facebook, 70% of our participants successfully registered their key. This, like with Google, meant they found the right place in menus and followed the wizard.
but there was a problem with Facebook. Facebook had a separate menu item for enabling two-factor authentication overall. This means that you could register the key and see the success modal, but would never be asked for the key at login time. And about half of our participants who successfully registered their key with Facebook failed to enable two-factor authentication and left it in the default disabled position. A notable problem that contributed to this happening, which we saw across Google and Facebook, was that participants were unsure how to test whether their new authentication mechanism was in place. This would have required clearing cached authentication credentials or using an incognito window, and a lot of people were unsure how to do that, or that it was necessary. But the Windows 10 success rate was even lower, and this deserves some explanation. 12 of our 31 participants found a different tool that did not enable two-factor authentication, and more details on what they found and how they did are in the paper. But I want to talk about the 19 people who attempted the Windows 10 two-factor authentication tool, five of whom successfully set it up. And I think it'll become clear why it was difficult if I run through the setup process as it existed last summer. This tool was written by Yubico and not by Microsoft, so you need to go to their website, find and download the manual. Be sure to get all 17 pages of it. Try to install the login software. Unfortunately, you're gonna get an error. You need to go into Windows Settings, enable the legacy .NET 3.5 framework, and then you may go back and install the tool. Then run the login tool. It says, would you like to enable YubiKey authentication? You say yes. It says, all right, please reboot for settings to take effect. So at this point, you want to not reboot. And the reason is, you get nothing from rebooting at this point. In fact, if you've had a previous installation of the tool, as in the case of our user study, on the same machine, orphaned Windows registry keys may mean you end up locked out of your account. And this happened to a few of our participants. Instead, what you should do is run the login tool, try to register your key. Unfortunately, bad configuration. You're gonna need to find, download, and install the configuration tool, load a newly generated HMAC SHA-1 challenge response key into configuration slot two, then register your key, then reboot. And then you can relax knowing that your computer is protected by two-factor authentication. And I'm pretty impressed with the five people who successfully completed <laughs> this part of the test. So what should we take away from these results? Obviously, Windows 10 was the most difficult to set up and will need drastic changes if it's going to serve a non-technical user base. But Facebook and Google's interfaces are very simple and they do target a non-technical user base. But because participants did not notice that extra button on the Facebook menu, and because they weren't sure how to test their new authentication mechanism, success on Facebook fell dramatically. But I would even argue that the Google success rate is not ideal. Only 83% of people we, we invited from a university were able to successfully set up their key. This tells us there's room for improvement across the board in either UI or in the instructions they had. One of our open-ended questions invited participants to tell us how their experience could have been better. And many of them told us they wished for better instructions. They wanted broken links fixed. They wanted video tutorials, perhaps, some more clarity. They wanted the names of things in the instructions to match the names of things in the real tool. But we also asked them what they liked. And eight people felt the existing instructions were helpful. Seven told us they were excited they were getting an extra layer of security, and four, these were four people who managed to actually test their new authentication mechanism, told us that while the setup was a pain, actual use was smooth. And there were two people who told us that after an hour with YubiKeys, they had nothing good to say at all. We administered John Brooks System Usability Scale Questionnaire. It's a set of 10 Likert questions designed to roughly place software along the spectrum of usability from horrible to amazing. It yields a score between one and 100, and over the decades we've learned to interpret as a, a sort of usability grade. And the setup process overall received poor marks. A score of 50 is below the standard acceptability threshold, as we might have imagined. And we do see a wide range of opinions in this histogram, but the system usability scale is not designed to tell us much more than this needs improvement in usability. So we took this difficult setup into account when we designed our longitudinal study. Study coordinators walked participants through setup, so there were no errors and all the proper backup mechanisms were in place. Participants then spent four weeks using either the house key sized YubiKey Neo or the smaller YubiKey Nano on their personal accounts. After four weeks, they came back, they completed the same usability scale questionnaire, and were interviewed. 
We coded and interpreted their responses. So when you run a longitudinal study, you might be worried that participants won't finish the entire study. And if you look at similar work, you will find that this happens. Fortunately for us, our graduated incentive structure and the population we chose combined with our good fortune meant that every participant did complete the study. But you might also wor be worried that if participants are trying out a new authentication scheme that might be buggy but certainly is unfamiliar to them, they might end up locked out when they're trying to perform a time-critical task and receive some kind of harm that way. And so I would direct you to the paper if you want to see all of the different backup mechanisms we had in place for people. But I wanted to mention that we did offer them 24-7 phone support. And we did receive two calls from our participants, and both were able to be resolved over the phone. So we were able to take good care of our participants. You'll recall that the setup of YubiKeys scored poorly. Participants liked YubiKeys much better not having to deal with the setup. But there's still room for improvement. A score in the 70s is above the standard acceptability threshold, but it's not amazing like a score in the 80s or 90s would be. So I want to share with you some of the insights that our participants found while they were incorporating YubiKeys into their daily life. Sometimes people want to share their accounts. If you have two-factor authentication via SMS or generated on a code generator app, it's pretty straightforward to share your account. I can call my family member or my friend and tell them my password and the two-factor authentication number. Now, this completely ruins two-factor authentication, but it does allow me to share my account. And YubiKeys made the design decision that this is not possible. And it means you're not able to remotely authenticate someone else's browser session. But it means you need, to, if you're going to use YubiKeys as your sole two-factor authentication, you need to plan in advance to make sure the person you're sharing with has another copy of the key or some other form of two-factor authentication they can provide while you are gone. Also, the YubiKey Nano is very small. So small that one of our participants described needing needle-nose pliers to remove it from his USB drive. Participants with the Nano were particularly worried about losing their keys, and three participants actually did lose their keys at some point during the study. Now, fortunately, all of them brought them back, so they did find them eventually, but this teaches us that having backup mechanisms, as we have seen enforced on Google and Facebook's platforms, is a good idea, and it's important. Of the 25 people in our study for four weeks, there were three instances of lost keys. In order to be plug-and-play compatible with as many operating systems as possible, YubiKeys pretend to be keyboards. This way they can communicate via keystrokes using default keyboard drivers. So the message that's sent, if you spuriously tap the sensor on your YubiKey, consists of a long string of characters followed by an end line. And I bet you can imagine where that might be a problem. This is what it looks like if you bump your YubiKey while your cursor is in the Google search bar. So you can imagine characters getting injected and an end line initiating actions. As you can imagine, this bothered and sometimes confused some of our participants, and six particularly made mention of this in our interview. Thirteen participants told us they preferred YubiKeys after trying them for these four weeks over other forms of two-factor authentication they knew of. And four told us that after trying YubiKeys, they preferred another form of two-factor authentication. And this indicates to us that the current strategy of offering multiple forms of two-factor authentication is allowing users to choose the form that best integrates with their daily lives. And this is a good result. So what can we say that we've learned overall? We see we cannot ignore the usability of setup because it becomes a barrier to adoption. Let's standardize the setup process so that the usability cost of learning need be paid only once, and then we can have users who have learned to pay this cost apply their knowledge broadly and gain security across many accounts. Let's give people clear and correct indications when they have succeeded. Let them know that they've done it right. Maybe even give them a chance to test drive their new authentication scheme. Maybe they won't want to do this always, but they can see it with a test drive both that it worked and two, how it works. We also see that YubiKeys have good potential. If we can fix the setup phase, there seem to be a segment of people who would like to use a YubiKey for two-factor authentication. And there's certainly room for minor improvement in day-to-day -day usability. 
But in fact, as we've reported our results to Ubico, where they were well received and watched the ecosystem over the year since last summer, we've seen many of these pain points either improved or going away entirely. And this speaks to a bright future for the usability of security keys like YubiKeys. So thank you very much. Let's move on to questions. We have a question from you. Um, Sadi Tish, uh, City University of New York. Uh -huh. um, are you aware of um, some similar work by uh, Gene Camp et al. who was published at the Financial Crypto? Yes. Yes, okay, I didn't see the reference there. So very similar results, it seems. It is. They focused their study on the Google account, right. and they were able to run a study, suggest some improvements, see those implemented, and then notice that the usability was markedly better. And that may contribute to uh, why we saw such good results on Google in our comparison. OK, I just didn't see the reference in the paper, so maybe I missed that. Yeah, it was, it was part of the same publication cycle. Great, thank you. OK. This is really interesting. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so I, you kind of implied that all of the people in the study had not had any prior experience with YubiKeys. Do you think? Uh, you also mentioned that a lot of workplaces are using it. Do you think the effect would change on either the setup or uh, just general usability um, for people who have encountered it at work, even if they didn't set it up themselves? I think that certainly is a factor. And there was a good study that came out of Google by Lang et al. that included some usability metrics when they implemented it at their company with their employees that may shed some light into that. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, thank you, Joshua.